Today is a new morning, a new day that God has given us, another Friday, the last Friday of January 2022. We give thanks to God for his new mercies every morning. We also give thanks to God for giving us another day to be alive and good health. He tells us in, in, in the Bible that we should always come to him with thanksgiving. Let us therefore start the day by thanking God for all he has done for us and also being merciful to us that we are alive today. We continue with our theme. Yesterday we were led by a text in Numbers 9, 15 to 23 on how God guided the people of Israel to the promised land. And we were looking at one lesson that he was teaching them and that was patience. That God, when he was guiding them, he wanted them to go at his own pace. That when he wanted them to go, he would command them to go. And when he commanded them to stay, they would stay. We learned that there is no time wasted. And when we wait upon God, we also learned that we should not regret of the things that we have not achieved in the past. God knew why and God has been waiting for the right time. Today we learn another lesson that God was teaching them by guiding them by the cloud that looked like a fire. The lesson we are learning today is contentment. Contentment is being satisfied by what you have. Accepting that where you are, it is God's way of teaching you to appreciate everything that you have. By contentment, you are saying that you are okay, that God has remembered you, and that you can look ar around and see that God has done much for you. It does not mean in any way that you are comfortable. You may not be comfortable with where you are. We truly need to move to the next step. But at least we appreciate that what we have, it is God's. By contentment, we bring joy in our hearts. We rejoice in God. We rejoice and also thank God that though I may not have everything, I have something enough for me today. It is an attitude that God wanted to teach the people of Israel. That in, wild, in the wilderness, God still provided for them. These people were in the wilderness. They would not sow, they would not reap, but they never lacked. They walked miles, but they never failed to walk and lack strength. God gave them what they needed. God provided. And the lesson that we are learning today is that where God leads us, he provides. He may lead you to the wilderness. Believe and trust that he will provide for you. He may walk you and lead you to the mountains. Believe and trust that he will provide for you. He may also lead you to the valleys. Remember, he will always provide for you. This is the attitude that we want to go in 2022, knowing that God is a provider of all seasons that he is leading us, knowing that he is with us. His presence is always with us. Unfortunately, as human beings, we want more than we have. It is our nature to want everything. We cannot get enough of what we have. We need more money. We need more than we have in material things. But are we contented with what God has given us today? Paul is teaching us to have a contented heart. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, Paul talks of contentment. He is saying that most of the problems that we have as human beings are because we are not contented with what we have. Look at us as a people. The reason most of the people are greedy is because they want more than what they have today. The reason we have a lot of corruption in our country is because people are not contented 
with the jobs, with the wealth, with what they have as a people, as provided by God. When we fail to be contented, we fail to trust in God. We need to know that God and acknowledge that God is the owner of everything. When we fail to see that, we try to achieve things on our own means. And by relying on us, we fail to trust and obey God's word. As we wait for things that we want in our lives, we should not be discontented by what we have today. What is Paul teaching us? Paul is telling us that we should count our blessings and see what God has done in our lives. Rejoice and thank him. Be grat give gratitude to him. Appreciate what we have. See how much good God is. He's so kind to us. And after that, we will be contented that God has provided for us. After we have thanked him and had a joyful heart, we should therefore go and tell him, now this is what we don't have, this is what we need, this is what we are praying for, but at least we are thankful for what we have. We should learn to enjoy the season we are in. It is good to know, and we learned it yesterday, that God is a God of all seasons, that he brought you to the season you are in today with a reason and with an agenda. He knew he understands. He uses circumstances to teach us. He uses circumstances to lead us. He uses circumstances to guide us to the next level. The reason you are going through what you are going through today is in preparation for the next season. We should therefore enjoy the season today, give thanks to God that God you have brought us this far with a new plan that you will take me tomorrow. Let me appreciate for today knowing that you will take me there where you have promised me. Number two, you should not waste the season of life you are in now because you want the next to come. When, the, when God was leading the people of Israel and he, they would settle for a man or even a year, God wanted them to be patient with him and he also wanted them to be contented that for the year that you will be here, I will provide for you. Though they were eager for the next step and to see the promised land, God wanted them to be contented and to trust him that he is their provider. He is a good shepherd. When he leads us as the shepherd, we should follow without complaining. By complaining, we fail to be contented with God. We fail to be contented with what we have. God wants us to see that our lives belong to him, that he is the controller of all lives. He is the creator of heaven and earth. He is always in control. By being contented, therefore, you acknowledge that God is in control. When God is in control, and when we are contented, the greatest reward we have is peace of mind. The reason most people are facing a lot of problems in life is because they lack that peace, peace of mind. They worry too much, worrying about tomorrow, Worrying of what to eat, worrying of what to wear. But God knows what we need. God knows what we need to eat. God knows where we will be tomorrow. In fact, we add nothing by worrying. What we do is we miss the joy, the happiness of today by worrying about things of tomorrow. God is teaching the people of Israel that yes, I promised you to take you to Canaan. At my time, I will. But I want you to be contented by the seasons that you will go through. The seasons of walking, the seasons of waiting, the seasons of standing still. And trust me that as long as I'm guiding you, I will provide for you. It is not an easy lesson. Knowing 
that as human beings, we are competing to achieve goals at our fastest times. We want more than we have. We want more that if we, than we even need. And God is looking at us as the people of Israel. And at times he fails to understand us because we have failed to count our promises. We have failed to count our blessings. We have failed to wait and be contented by what we have. As Christians, this year, though we may have gone through a lot last year, may we seek peace of mind, peace that comes from God. May we seek that rest that Jesus is telling us, that we come, we who are weary and heavy laden, and he give us rest. What he's telling us is be prepared to give thanks to God and have a joyful heart and enjoy your life because I, the Lord, knows what you need and I will provide. With that trust in our hearts and making our minds be contented, we will be able to worship and praise God and always come to him with thanksgiving, rejoicing always, praying continually with a lot of thanksgiving in our hearts, knowing that God is providing for us. I know you may be in that wilderness. Maybe you are suffering from health problems. You may be there jobless. You may not be contented with your workplace. You may also not be contented at the family you are in. You may not be contented with the area you are living in. Maybe the house you are in is not what you need in your life. But I want to encourage you and please help you understand that you are where you are because God has put you there. Look around. See God. See the blessing that He has provided for you. See beyond the situation. See beyond the place you are living. See beyond the work you are doing. See beyond the place you are teaching. See beyond the school you are in. See beyond and see God. Have that positive attitude to be contented and to praise and worship God and thank Him for the things He has done for you. Enjoy this season you are in because tomorrow you will not be in the same season. Enjoy the work you are doing today because tomorrow you will have a better job. Enjoy the place you are living in today. Tomorrow you will be in a better place. Enjoy the season. Don't let worries of today or worries of tomorrow deny you the happiness of today. In the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.